Hey guys, it's Johnny again. Told you I would get you another video of these procedural mesh tools being put to use. And I think the best way to do that is to break down some of the more advanced or interesting ways that they were used in the example levels that shipped with the Lyra project. So let's get to it. One of the more interesting uses of, of the advanced window tool is um, any of these ramps here in the level. Um, they're actually making use of mirroring and a cutter to make that ramp. So first thing we'll do is we'll, we'll get rid of that mirror and then we'll come here and disable the cutter. Where is that? Custom cutter, there we go, boom. So without that, you can see it is just a window. We've got the opening shifted over and then I'll actually turn that cutter on and the cutter is rotated to make that angle and they just move it down. Oh, that's not grabbing it. Nope, that's the, <laughs> there we go. And you see, if you wanted a flat and then a transition, you can control it that way. You could come here, you could change that rotation if you want to change the angle of that ramp, right? So that's a really interesting way to make these ramps. That's done for these guys. That's done for this same thing here. That's done for this dude as well. Actually, with this one, you can see that all they did was push the opening past that left extreme, so it cuts the other um, extension there off. Um, you just push it past that wall width, right? So if you extend wall width, you can see where it would actually have come through here. You can move that opening there. Even these panels on the wall are the advanced window tool. They're using mirroring to extend to do this extension. It looks kind of like an extrude, um, and all they're really doing. Let's see, using a mirror. Bring that up here. If you can see that. So that's a function of turning a mirror on. You can move it further over, and then the cutter is what's actually making that top part there. So you can tweak all of this how you want, different shapes, that kind of thing. So you can get a lot, you just, you have so many settings to tune and play with here to make lots of different geometry that doesn't necessarily um, fall in line with what the name of the tool is. It's, they're all super, super useful. This, this appears to be the one that's used the most, I think. Here's another example of the advanced window tool. Um, you can see here, okay, let me get rid of that panel we'll get rid of these guys you see that these are two different pieces both of them are individual advanced windows they don't necessarily have to be you have enough freedom with the tool to make one of these do the same thing so I'm gonna show you how to do that when so we'll make it 90 right and then we should be able to take that opening Move the opening over like that. And now I think when we mirror it, oh, it's way over there. Okay. What I was doing. There we go. Bring it in. Same thing, just one piece. Not super important, but it's just showing you how much you can actually do with these tools. Another interesting use of the tools is taking the panel tool to make a light like this. Um, or even to make just a ring light or a light bar, that kind of thing. So if you take this panel tool here, bring this guy out. This was your, so just to show you, like that looks like the inside, but that is a separate piece. So we'll move it out just so I can demonstrate, actually, since that's uh, emissive, we'll use it to show you depth here. So all this really is, is it has, let me come down here, it has an inset portion right so you've got like essentially a rounded edged cube and you can come here and you can change your corner radius however you wanted to just like the window tool but the the nice thing here is that we can take this topper extrude and you can see that light surface the lit surface coming towards us, right? So we can set how much we want to inset now. If you want to cut all the way out, you want to make a, a ring light, you can cut all the way through there. So the operation on here that actually 
takes the topper and makes it a cutaway is this here, operation subtract. If you want to see it not subtract from this outer mesh, then you could do union, right? And you could come here and give it a positive extrude, and you'll see it come through like a just a regular roof light that looks less less spacey, right? All right, so now we go to this uh, convolution block out. I don't want to save any of that. And in case you want to do this later, it's just, it's not loaded yet. So you want to have world partition in here, select these, right click, load selected cells. That'll actually pop all your actual world geometry and stuff in there. An interesting use of the advanced tube tool can be seen here. So these are actually just two individual advanced tube tools. One is um, a little bit larger than the other one so you can get this sort of uh, two-piece feel and then the window opening here is just wider and taller so that you look like you've got sort of a border on that so just to show you how these settings work we'll go ahead and hide this outer one or the one that's in the back I guess taller bigger whatever the border looking one hide that come nope not that guy come here and swap to the generator okay so first thing I notice is these hallway cutouts or um, what they're called as windows in here. So you got your generic settings for making a tube, right? How round you want it, is your steps there, how thick you want the wall on the inside, that kind of thing. Radius, obviously it's radius. Um, you can even revolve it not all the way 360, you could do a semicircle, that kind of thing. Um, so then you want to come down here, and the other point of interest is windows. That's these cutaways here. Uh, you can turn that off. You can come here and set it to repeater. This sync instance to wall, what it's going to do is, even if you don't have repeater wall ticked, sync instance to wall is going to sync it to this many instances. Right, so if you come down here, you see the window instance is set to 10. So if you do that and untick it doesn't quite know what to do here so we'll go back to sync instances to wall and then we can come up here and you could make it you know that many cutaways whatever you want to do there so while we're talking about syncing to the wall instances you could actually tick this box repeater wall that's going to give you individual wall pieces then you can actually set how far apart they are like gap between them right so if you wanted to make individual like column pieces without it having too much of a semblance of the circle in the middle on top. You could do that and then you need to rotate. Let's see here. We'll come down here to, I think it's window angle offset. Yeah, we can rot that, rotate that and get them sort of in the middle. We'll rotate that some more. There we go. Now you got sort of a cool ring guy in the middle there on top with these dudes and then you could go to make that gap quite a bit more say like this you make that even even more open feel I jumped ahead a bunch I was trying to figure out so I'll show you what I'm, what I did to get around it maybe if you um, if you have a solution let me know in the comments or something just tell me I'm stupid <laughs> um, so what I ended up having to do so with repeater wall and gaps put in, right? If you have revolve degree set to 360, you get a gap between these guys, but not at the end, right? So my little workaround here was just to take that and make your gap. And it's it's you see it's proportionally changing these things as you do that, and now you actually get that gap there. So then it gets you something like this, and now you can come in here and rotate your windows with angle offset. All right, so we'll go back to doing what these guys do with. And we'll come back and actually, that's interesting looking too. A, a, a cool material on there would be all right. Uh, rotate that way and now you get these T-pillars, that kind of thing. 
And that seems to work out okay. Another interesting tool use is uh, making these bar lights here with this extrude corner tool. Um, it gives you some freedom. We'll go look over at this side. You'll notice that it's a similar shape actually to this advanced window back part. Right, it's just a bar light for that same shape wall. The difference is, let me pull them both out. I believe, I'll move that guy, and then we'll move, where's my handle, there we go. Oh my goodness, there we go. Rounded edge on this top ceiling is what they call it over here. I'm not sure, I don't, I'm not sure what it's called on the advanced window, but um, it's probably just uh, wall width is what gets you over here. I think that is the only difference in if you're making this kind of shape. So we'll go ahead and convert this guy. So actually, yep, do that. And what was that? Whatever, that's a missive. That's fine. So we'll come here and grab extrude ceiling. So any any wall that's that's kind of shape, you can actually control how far that's extruded. You just do this for your height and that for your length on top. Super easy and you don't have to go into your whatever modeling tool to do that. Do the same thing in here. There we go. There's a ring light. Here's another one. Both of these are just panels. So you can take a look at this guy. Come here. Do that. I wish I need to know what that material is. CP bar. Okay. Um, so what's left here is the panel because they're using a cutaway. So you go at CP bar. Oop, there's your light bar. So even if we pull way back up here, you can see that even the outer edge of this map, all this larger stuff. This is still just a semicircle with the advanced tube tool. And you have those window cutouts like we had on the inside here. Uh, the skylight cutaways here. Same thing. That's the tube. Come here. This guy. 66 degrees worth of semicircle here. You can bring it down in here. I bet if we set window height down, that's how they're doing that cut. They're just raising it tall enough to get through there. Well, Alright guys, that's it. These are just a few of the more useful ways I've seen these tools used uh, when breaking down these levels. Uh, if you got any comments or questions or tutorial suggestions for new stuff, um, just leave me a comment. Catch you next time.